Hello and good evening and welcome to New Forest Morphs. Mandy's joining me today. We're going to be doing a special uh, gene and the gene that we're going to be introducing today is the Calico. One of my favourite genes. We've got two Calicos in our collection. I'm going to start you with our big girl who just shed out this morning as I was cleaning. I thought this would be a prime opportunity just to show you how beautiful she is. And come and have a look. Her name is Pringle and uh, she is an absolute beauty. Let's look at her. She just shed out and she's looking stunning. What do you think, Mandy? Yeah, she's nice. She's lovely. Now, the Calico has got quite a few interesting things going on. This is a very high-end line. It's called the F and F line, uh, which I think stands for uh, Flora and Fauna line. And the reason why it's called the F um, Calico is because if you look very carefully at the body, can you see all the white cotton look to the snake? And that's a high white version of the Calico. You get low whites and high whites. But she's um, absolutely gorgeous. We'll bring her out and uh, show you what she looks like under the light box since she's shed. So we'll go up very carefully behind her. She's lovely, isn't she? There we go. Can we come and join Mandy? Pass me the camera. Thank you. So there we have an incredibly beautiful snake. I'm just going to move her slightly into the centre. And can you just see how gorgeous she is? She's one of my favourite snakes. We bought this about a year ago from Chiron at uh, Willy Good Balls. Very kindly sold it to us. And every time she sheds, she gets better and better. The whites get higher. And these are often referred to as sugars as well. They've got lots of different names. White-sided ball pythons is another name. So there's a few names out there for them. But I think they are a beautiful part of our collection. And we've put the Super Pastel Banana Orange Dream to her. They've locked up twice, which is great. And we're hoping to produce a pastel calico banana orange dream which I think is going to be absolutely insane. I'm just going to zoom in on her face so you can see what she looks like close up. She's got a beautiful temperament, just look at that lovely eye. She's called Pringle because Emily came up with the name and you can guess why because anyone that likes crisps will enjoy eating the Pringles and you can see she's got these amazing Pringle shaped patterns on her body which uh, you can see is white pixelation and the white pixelation goes into the overflow just look at that it just looks so gorgeous can you see how it's almost as though there's some chocolate spilling over some white popcorn um, really beautiful so I think the F and F line is one of the best lines out there and I'd highly recommend looking into getting one of those um, worth paying a bit extra for the quality you can get some really low expression calicos but this is a superb example and thank you to Chiron for, for choosing such a be beautiful animal really it's gorgeous so we'll bring her out and uh, we'll show you her temperament so Pringle's going to come with us I'll pass the camera over to Mandy and then there you go man thank you there we go Now she's been packing on weight. She's using small rats. I'll just see if she'll go over my neck. Come on, girl. There we go. How about that, man? Isn't she lovely? She's been eating small rats. And um, I think when we got her from Chiron, she was about 1200 maybe 1300 grams and she's now put on another five or six hundred she's weighing in about 1800 grams and say we've been putting the banana to her and they've been locking up and she's been since she's locked up she's been eating a lot better she was a little bit fussy actually I was, had to give her Maltese last year and she took her time adjusting to her new habitat but since she's been moving to the new facility with the ambient temperature being better 
and this is not disturbed. So the other thing about having your own facility is that you haven't got people going in and out of your bedrooms, you haven't got lights going on, you haven't got noise and distraction. And what you've got, and let me just, talking of noise, I'm just going to turn the fan off because I know that can <laughs> sometimes uh, be a bit noisy in the background. Just going to turn that fan off. There we go. Is that a little bit more quiet for you? Um, yes, so with the facility, when you come in and do your cleaning, it's an hour or two's work, and then you can leave your facility until the evening, come back and check on your snakes, but they get undisturbed and they're settled. And I found since we've done this, our snakes have um, taken on a new dimension. They're a lot more relaxed, they're more willing to eat, they're more willing to feed because they're not being constantly disturbed. And when you do spend time with them, they enjoy that time with you. So anyone that's thinking about building a facility or having a separate room for their snakes, I think it'll be a good move if you can do it. I've got a few um, subscribers who I've been communicating with and I have one, one of my favorite subscribers is Hamlin and Hamlin's just sent me some pictures of his uh, future facility that he's hoping to, uh, to get involved in. And he wants to build everything from scratch. He wants to lay out his floor plan. And he said he's taken inspiration from what we've done as well as Richard Predator BP and some other uh, YouTubers out there. So lovely to hear uh, your story Hamlin and I hope that everything goes well for you. I know he's up to his eyeballs in snow at the moment so <laughs> a little bit frustrated he wants to get going with his project but I suppose there's other things he can be doing. Uh, have a great night feeding tonight. I know it's his feeding night tonight as well so keep those comments coming in. I love to have engagement with the um, uh, community that we're building and uh, tell us what you think about this beautiful calico. She's a little bit shy. Can you notice Mandy she's not popping her head over? Or is she? Is she doing more than I think? No. Is she still behind me? Oh yeah, she's coming over your shoulder now. Is she over my shoulder? Feel free to zoom in on her, she is a beautiful animal. But um, yeah, so coming back to the calico. Um, the calico was first discovered in 2002, I believe. And it was discovered by Nerd, who are responsible for discovering a lot of new genes. So we thank them for their um, hard work in producing and finding such beautiful animals and um, you can see just how high white this one is we get lots of different expressions you see the high white how beautiful that is and see the, the, the tones in here as well there's oranges there's browns there's whites and she's absolutely gorgeous I and mean, look at the crazy pattern that she has I mean although they're Pringle shaped as you look at the tail, you'll see that it gets crazy and crazy as it gets down to the tail. And you see that the Pringles merge together. She's not letting me show you, but if I show you her tail patterns, you can see how some of the Pringles merge together. But she's having a nice time exercising on me anyway. And she wants to come down onto the table. Hello girl, how are you doing? Are you beautiful? And you can see her neck patterns. The nice thing about the calicos is they do get more beautiful with age. And we can put her on the table, see what she wants to do. And they get more speckling. And this one, I believe, has been getting prettier and prettier as she's got older and older. And now she's breeding. And I'm looking forward to when she actually goes. She's going to glow even more than this. And I can't wait to see what Banana, Orange Dream and Pastel will do to this beautiful girl. But she's lovely. She's a little bit shy. But um, she's got a nice little temperament. Never bitten us or hurt us. But there she is. A fine specimen of an animal. Right, we'll slip her back and then we'll talk about some other genetics. And I will bring out um, some... I've got one other uh, calico that I'm going to share with you. Um, but we'll put Pringle back, let her settle down. Hope you enjoyed meeting her and uh, we'll talk a bit more about some of the nice combinations that we like to be shooting for. Um, so, actually I think she wants to stay out a bit longer. Why not have her out for a bit longer? I'm going to borrow my sheet notes here. So, the other name that the calico has is the bumblebee. Not the bumblebee, the bubblegum. And I guess it's because when you see bubblegum that's been thrown on the floor, when you stand on it, <laughs> bubble gum comes up on your foot I guess. I'm guessing that's why it's called uh, bubble gum. Uh, but it's also called white sided as well. Um, so you get a high and low white expression. 
It's one of the most popular genes out in Morph Market. I think there's close to 3,000 animals out there to choose from. So it's actually quite good. It's obviously white speckling. Um, you can't get a super version of this Mandy because this is a dominant gene, it's not a co-dominant. So people have tried to put them together to try and get supers, but I understand there isn't such thing as a super. So you'll end up with 50% of your offspring being calico, um, but you won't be able to produce a super on that side. Um, now the other thing is, there's one other snake that we love, which Jad um, has, which is called Peaches, and I can show you how beautiful she looks shortly. But she um, has pastel, so when you add pastel to this, it really does pop and the colours come out beautifully. Um, the other combinations that are worth putting in is the Mojave. So Mojave calicos are gorgeous. The lesser calicos um, are also beautiful. And what the lesser calico does is it will actually have more white fading in on the side and it merges beautifully with the white pattern as well. So there's another one that's worth looking at. We spoke about what the banana can do and we will show you a few pictures of what a banana calico looks like. Um, and then the other one that we like is Enchi Fire. Pastel calicos are gorgeous and Jared has bought one called Peaches that he fell in love with and we got that from Southampton Reptiles. And that's putting on some nice weight and we'll show you her a bit later. And the other thing we can do is you can add Exantic to them. You can add the Clown calicos are gorgeous and you can put a whole bunch of really crazy patterns in there. If you go for the Exantic Calico, I'd go with a 50-50 version, because I think if you're not careful, you could wipe out a lot of the Exantic pattern with the Calico. So if you're gonna go for an Exantic version, I would recommend not going too high white. Um, and then there's other possibilities. Now one of the favorite ones is called a Calendar, which is a Calico Spider. So the spider already has quite a lot of high white in the animal. So when you put a calico and a spider together, you get an incredibly reduced pattern that takes the white right up. And I'll show you what they look like. If you mix in a pastel and get yourself a calico bumblebee, they are insane looking, crazy looking snakes. So anyone that likes white moving up their pattern, I would say that mixing the calico with the spider um, is wonderful. And then you mix in orange dream to that, and it'll just make it pop. Yellow belly, spider, calico is a gorgeous. So just to sum up, I'll show you my last snake, Peaches. We'll put Pringle back, and then I think we'll just move on and have a look at what's available on the morph market. So thank you very much to this beautiful animal. Do you like her, man? Yeah, she's lovely. Isn't she nice? One of my favorites. We'll slip her back. Thank you Pringle, you've been an absolute darling tonight. Just slip her back. Now I'm going to show you something very special here. Uh, this is Peaches. And Jared fell in love with her, like I said, about a year ago. We got her as a very small snake actually. I think it was about 100 grams when we got her. And um, she's now, I reckon she's getting on for about six, 600 grams so she's feeding quite well i think we'd like to see her upon a little bit more weight but let's just show you what the enchi and the pastel and the fire does with calico right, here she comes here we come girl now this is peaches what do you think of her mandy isn't she lovely mm -hmm. can you see that beautiful gorgeous interaction between the enchi, the pastel and the calico and the fire as far as you see the four gene animal here and she's absolutely stunning just look how beautiful she is and we've got a lovely green eye nice head pattern and have a look at her body patterns and color can you see how the enchi banding works nicely with the white calico and then you've got the pastel and the fire brightening up the gene of course, Enchi produces quite a lot of um, orange in the snake as well. And there she is, her tail pattern. Let's see if I can show you her tail pattern. But she truly is a beautiful snake. And I can see why Jad fell in love with her. So she needed need about another year or so to put on some weight before we can start breeding with her. But uh, I think she's lovely. So there's Peaches. I hope you've enjoyed our little 
series on the Calico gene here. It's one of our favourite genes and uh, just gives you a few ideas. I re I'd highly recommend it. You can get into the Calico project. I think the starting position is about 150 to 200 pounds for a Calico. And then when you start layering them up, that's when you start to pay bigger money and they can go as high as $10,000 once you get your mixture right. So, thank you Mandy for being our camera lady today. Thank you everyone for supporting us on our channel. Please feel free to put a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. We're getting closer to the 300 subscribers. We're up to um, 280 now. Just another 20 and we'll be doing another competition. So keep an eye on the next competition going out. I hope everyone's having a good start to the new year. And uh, we would like to send us send you guys lots of love. And what I'll do is I'll do a part two on this series, which will be going onto Morph Market and looking at the different combinations, looking at the different genes, what's out there for the calico. And I'll show you how we can you know, blend all the other genes and see what my favourite um, Morph Market calicos are. And thank you very much for supporting us on the part two as well. So it's goodbye from Mandy. Goodbye for me, Paul, and goodbye for New Forest Morphs.